So basically, I could codified vote, corruption. I could vote in Iowa, and then I could take a, a, a bus tri trip. I could just literally drive from from election to election to election. You know, in in the primaries, I could go in the primaries all over. I could go from primary to primary, primary, register primary. Register here, register registered. there. Each time vote, I get there, register, register vote, vote, register, register vote. vote. And on the day of election, I could travel. Let's say I live in the Texarkana area. I could vote in four states in one day. Oh, you can get uh, busloads. Busloads of people voting in four states in one day. Sure. I mean, how many states can you get through already do in, that. in that, right? But now this law federalizes We're protected. that. protected. Right? Makes it legal. Awesome. Makes it legal. Yay. There you go. All right. But look at this. I, I just, I, I, wanna, I want you guys to, I want to make this point. Because, once again, the Constitution only allows Congress to interfere with in a limited capacity centers with with house and senate elections mm -hmm. it does not have the authority to interfere no mention of president presidential already. elections yeah they don't but they lump it all in by saying federal elections right mm -hmm. because the president is a federal election but can i remind you that both article two Article 2, Section 1, Clause 1, and 2 and 3, and the 12th Amendment give us the election process for the president as the Electoral College vote, hmm. which is why Article 1, Section 4 doesn't mention presidential elections at all. Well, that's fascinating. The, so they're going to the, create this bifurcated mess or 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 i guess i don't know what are they doing well just throwing it all in one basket yeah they don't make a federal takeover of elections see here's the here's the conflating of terms right they said in this bill right let's put it back up here the section three i should have done that before i made everybody look at it um that's up here Congress finds it has broad authority to regulate the time, place, and manner of congressional elections under the election clause of Article 1, Section 4, Clause 1. Okay? We can sort of agree with that. We can sort of agree with that. Uh, but that's just congressional elections. That the Supreme Court has affirmed that the substantive scope of elections clause is broad and that time, place, and manner, blah, 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 blah. We're still talking about congressional elections, congressional elections, correct, congressional elections. Somewhere down here, they start talking about federal elections rather than congressional elections. Now, one of the culprits, mind you, is the 14th Amendment, right? So the 14th Amendment is you can't deny people the right to vote. Yeah. And so now all of a the sudden, they use that very simple broad language to say that congress although article 1 section 4 clause 1 specifically limits them to congressional control of congressional elections mm -hmm. that now they have plenary power over all elections yeah to and preserve the, rights the states have created excessively onerous voter identification requirements yes uh, which is to say any identification requirement at all burdensome voter registration procedures so they're lightening the load on that yes. you don't have to even fully complete right. the forms right voter purges so if you you know if you if you fought uh in the revolutionary war you're still eligible to vote right um limited and equal automatic access registration to voting too. by mail so they want a free-for-all with the mail-in voting and We've email voting that. polling place closures um so that's pretty much uh, uh keeping them open forever yeah which by the way the longer you know the longer that you keep the polling places 
open and you don't set a time like, hey, it's time to vote, come vote, then that gives more and more time for you to carry out uh, your nefarious activities. Right. So you don't do it in a quick and efficient ordered manner. You know, you have plenty of time to drag suitcases around mm -hmm. and copy ballots and that sort of thing. Um, so there you go. But I want you to recognize something that the majority of their constitutional authority doesn't actually come from the Constitution. Yeah, it's all it comes from references to Supreme, Supreme Court, Court cases, cases and, and decisions what the, what the Congress, what Congress has decided. Thinks. Mm -hmm. Congress finds. Yeah. So when Congress finds something now, it is the equal Scavenger to the Constitution. Hunt. Hey, look right? what I found. It's now in the Constitution if you find it. Well, great. Thank you. It's not very encouraging. <clears throat> but here's the thing. I just want uh, this is this is something that's irritating to me as a constitutionalist. This, although, you know, you see all these this case law stuff here. Right. This is not allowed by this. The presidential elections are not federal elections. They're presidential elections. And this conflating of terms that you hear in the media, this conflating of terms you hear with the pre with with politicians, we need to call them out because the bottom line is Congress does not have control over federal elections by the Constitution. They have control over congressional elections by the Constitution. That means states, you have to separate your state elections from these ballots and imply your own you know, regulations, you need to separate the, the congressional, presidential these are the congressional ballots. Yeah. These are the congressional ballots. This is the presidential ballot. These are the congressional ballots. These are the state and local ballots. That's, that's what they're, what needs to happen now. Will it happen? I don't know. Do we but, have any hopes that the Republicans in the Senate are going to resist this monstrosity? Well, like I said, it's still stuck in committee since January. I don't know that it will even hit the floor. But I suspect it has to do. It's only this February. Is, They've got. Yeah. Well. Lots of time. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of things taking up their time, too. I would be surprised if this hits the floor, but I already told you why. They're busy making their kill list. Yeah. I, I believe it's because of all of the ethics requirements that they put in here and all of the conflict of interest rules for members of Congress and congressional staff so the, and so the slimy, lobbying. So the slimy representatives who don't want to uh, have ethics may save us from, yeah. uh, from further erosion so of the electoral system. Subtitle B section 9101 prohibiting members of the House of Representatives from serving on boards for nonprofit entities. Conflict of interest rules for members of Congress and congressional staff exercising uh, exercise of rulemaking powers. So there's there's anti-corruption and ethics reform within this. So that might just be what saves it. All right.